Hey Lego fans, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about Lego. My name is Andy. Hope you're doing well. Well guys, this is what I've come up with so far for my train station for my elevated line. What do you think? It is 15 bricks high, which is what the elevated line is. Now keep in mind, I'm using black plate up here, but it's going to be tiled off in some other color, so it won't be black. But I'm using all masonry bricks, one by twos for all the columns, just alternating directions back and forth. And then I've got three sets of stairways going up. I don't know whether to run them like that or to run them staggered back and forth with a landing in between. It's, uh, it's actually pretty sturdy. Sturdier than I thought it would be for being 15 bricks tall. Now, the other question is, as far as the uh, barrier, the fencing up top, do you guys like this barrier? Or do you think it would look better with this fencing instead? Personally, I like this better, I think, because it looks more of like a barrier you would have uh, on an elevated platform. Plus, it matches up with what I put on top of the wall. That separates the space center from this lot over here so yeah you know when you tile off this middle section here so it won't be black on black it'll be black on something else i don't i don't know what yet what i'm going to do as far as tiling goes but it will have some kind of tiling i think this looks better what do you guys think it'll obviously be the platform will be bigger than this i just ran out of uh one by two masonry bricks. I was thinking about just using regular one by two bricks just uh, temporarily just to, to finish it to see what it looks like, but uh, haven't done that thus far. It won't take long to get some more masonry bricks either. So I use the same arches here as I used on the retaining walls. So I think those look pretty good. Yeah, this is kind of what I've come up with so far. Now, Granted, this thing will have a roof on it, too. Probably some type of clear flat roof, maybe on a slight angle. Probably maybe put a pillar in uh, the middle or towards the middle of this platform and then have the roof kind of slant back. Or maybe I, I probably was thinking about putting the, the roof on hinges so that way you could kind of slant it any way you want whether you want it straight across or, or to a slight uh, decline and towards the back but yeah this is my makeshift train station platform for my elevated line this is what it looks like from this direction right here from this perspective so yeah comment below let me know what you think uh, of my uh, of my design so far i'd appreciate your uh, your input and this is what it would look like positioned right next to the tracks now that I look at it, though, I'm going to have to come up with some kind of walkway plank or the whole platform has to be closer to the tracks because what are they going to do? Jump across? <laughs> I mean, most like subways and stuff have a small gap that you have to walk over top of, but nothing like that. So I'm going to have to extend the platform over, like overhang, or I'm going to come up, I have to come up with some kind of a platform or a walkway to go between the tracks and the platform itself. Something else I built here in the last couple of days is my Back to the Future DeLorean time machine. I know this is nothing new, but we're going to take a little look at it here real quick. Check it out, guys. Got the, uh, of course, it's got the gall wing doors. You open up here, and now they will not stay open, unfortunately, by themselves. They just want to keep closing on me. I don't know if that's normal for all of these or if it's just my model, but, uh, it, it, yeah, it's just the weight. It just will not stay open. <laughs> and, of course, you got the hood here. Well, this is... It's not the engine, it's the, this is like the trunk because the engine's in the back. Open that up here. 
There's the plutonium and the hoverboard. <laughs> I built this one according to Back to the Future Part 2, where it's got Mr. Fusion back there for the, uh, for the power source, but it doesn't have the uh, stuff on the hood that they put on there in Back to the Future Part 3. You know, I was thinking about putting that on there, because Back to the Future Part 3 is probably my favorite out of the three movies, so... But the, uh, you could build it, you could build it either way, three, the three different ways, you know, back to future one, two or three, like the part one had the hook that, uh, the big hook that they stuck in the back there for the lightning strike. And then part two looks like this. And part three had the extra parts that they had there on the hood. So yeah, you can do, do three different ways. It's got this plaque right here. Time machine manufactured by Dr. E. Brown Enterprises, 1985, 1.21 gigawatts or gigawatts, <laughs> plutonium and 88 miles per hour for the activation speed comes with two mini figures, of course, Marty McFly and Doc Brown. Pretty cool, huh, guys? Take a look at the uh, back end here. Pretty realistic. It's got that out of time California license plate, which is actually from part one. They wanted you to put the uh, 2015 license plate. I never even knew the plate changed in the movies, but apparently it changed for the 2015 uh, version of the car. But I went ahead and kept the out of time plate on there. I thought that one looked better than the 2015 version. Of course, Mr. Fusion opens up. It's got some trash in there, banana. Uh, in a pop can turn around look at the other side here same situation here with the gall wing doors and well that one might stay open at least for a little bit <laughs> nope nope it's falling it's falling ever so slightly yeah, it's closed yeah they, they will not stay open for some unknown reason just the weight of the door, I guess. But here's all the gadgets and gizmos and stuff and, and piping and, and whatnot on the back. Making it look pretty realistic like the actual car in the movie. It's got the wiring going to the front there, underneath the door, to the back. And, of course, inside, which I can't really... Well, there you can see through the windshield the time circuits... It's got the stickers that shows, you know, where you've been, where you're going, and all that stuff. Steering wheel. Now, the, the wheels on this don't actually steer with the steering wheel because it actually, there's there's a lever. I can't really show you on camera because I can't pick it up with one hand and do the, and, and, and activate it. But on the bottom, there's a lever there, that red lever. You push that lever over and the wheels do this like that there we go yeah just like back to the future part two so with having the mechanism to do that they they didn't put in a mechanism for actually steering the vehicle so and i don't blame them either because it would have been i mean it was it was difficult enough getting that mechanism in there let alone putting a steering mechanism in as well so there you go back to the future delorean what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And right there is where she's going to live for right now. I'd really rather have it up with my other creator expert cars that are the same scale. But since I don't have any more room on the shelf, there's where it's going to have to live. Now, granted, I do still have a lot of other extra or uh, cars the same scale. So eventually I'll probably have two full shelves over there because I got the camper van, I got the Harley Davidson motorcycle, I got the Porsche and all those uh, cars that are still need to be built. So yeah, it'll, uh, it'll have company eventually and we'll have to move the speed champions elsewhere. So yeah, what do you think? I had to temporarily move my wall out here just to get these base plates out so I could build the, uh, the platform over there. That's what it looks like from a distance here. But yeah, those will those will all go back in there, and we'll put the wall back in there, and and then it needs to have a wall on this other side too. It needs to have a wall barrier on this side as well. Now, as far as the space center goes, 
yes, I know. I realize it's not completely 100% realistic, like having the rockets here right beside the train track. I mean, somebody pointed that out to me like, well, if the rocket took off, it would melt the train track. Well, yeah, probably would. <laughs> so we'll call it a rocket storage rather than than actually taking off there or maybe what i should have done was put the uh the rocket uh tower here i should have put it in the center or towards that side over there maybe or this one something like i don't know i think it looks good i mean i think the arrangement looks good as it is but again you know realistically i, I understand that you know it wouldn't be that close to railroad tracks but with the limited space we have, we're just going to have to put our pretend hats on and <laughs> just kind of look at it like it is. So, yep. All right, guys. I think that's all I have for you today. Thanks for taking me along. I do appreciate it. And uh, I will have much more for you in the future. we got some exciting videos coming up, so you don't want to miss those. So tu stay tuned right here to Let's Talk About Lego. I will see you in the next video. You guys have a great day. Oh, and don't forget, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button right now. And if you enjoyed the video or you enjoyed Lego, hit that like button as well. We do appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye.